it's Naomi and Mishka from Seraphonite Games here. Um, back with the February um, edition of the Wayhaven questions and answers. Um, we hope that you um, enjoyed last months. Um, all the comments and everything on social media were super supportive and Thank lovely. Thank you for those. Um, it was lovely and we had so much fun doing it. We were nervous when we uploaded it, but it's been it's been received well, I think. Yeah. Um, so yes, so this is February's. Um, so how um, was your Valentine's Day, Mishka? It was very nice. It was very quiet. Good. I spent it with silver mostly. But I did get a Valentine's gift. That's from my friend. lovely. Thank yeah. you, Coral. <laughs> they were lovely nail varnishes. Thank you. Oh, and we all know that Mishka likes to do her nails. <laughs> do you have a nice one? Yes, it was the first one with our little one. Um, we pretty much just sat and binge watched Netflix and binged on for a Roche, which was delightful. That's good. Really? Way to spend it. Good yes, yeah. yeah. Um, I accidentally, on purpose, ate the Ferrero Rocher that I had already bought and then had to order more to replace the ones that I already bought um so yeah that was that was nice that was good so you didn't listen to this really. yeah double double the Ferrero Rocher on my phone which was very nice yeah. yeah um okay cool so shall we dive right into Let's February's questions okay so again apologies if I get anybody's usernames in, um pronounced incorrectly um but here we go. So the first one is um, from Anonymous and they have asked, um, hey, I hope you're having a good day. I had a question about love. My question is, who would say is falling in love the fastest? And can you explain just a little, a tiny bit? How about a teen of it? <laughs> um, <laughs> my personal option, opinion, sorry, is A, F, N and M. Um, yeah, poor M answers, really. <laughs> <laughs> if this is spoilers, then sorry, lot. Um... Uh, I agree mostly. Um, Adam, Ava, definitely is the fastest. There was insta love right from the moment in the office when they had that, you know, <laughs> eye contact, gazing, all that, you know. Love it. It was, it was deep and fast and it was right on there. <laughs> so Adam, Ava was definitely up front. I would actually say it's probably Nate Nat next. Mm -hmm. Um Felix Farah close behind, but Felix Farah spends a little bit more longer in the crush stage mm. than Nate Nat. Nate Nat has a very natural progression of like, oh, we're in the crush stage, crush stage, crush stage, oh, crust bread, mm. bread, mm. bread, mm. bread, mm. bread. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, in the crush stage, and then they go to oh, it's getting more, and oh yeah, we're in love mm -hmm. a bit quicker. Felix Farah, it takes a bit longer, but it, there's no in between. It's like crush stage and i'm in deep in love there's no like there's no in between <laughs> there in between. it's one or the other <laughs> yeah um mason morgan um it's a bit different for them they will take longer to fall in love but it will take even longer for them to realize that it is love i love that I love, that's <laughs> one of my favorites um it'll be it'll be very much like oh you know when they realize it they would have been like oh well i've been in love for like like years like oh okay that's what, all right then i suppose that's what it is okay I love that. so I they love will that. actually be in love long before they yeah, realize but they that that's what it think. is but oh, yeah they didn't realize i love and that's one of my favorite kind of tropes tropes <laughs> i love it um okay so the next one is Ely's e e e hyphen lily lies lily apologies Lilies. yeah yeah um, <laughs> can i ask for facts about our captain roy's son um, like, is he married? Was he Rook's friend, or were they just co-workers? Um, he's not married now. Um, uh, they were they were friends to a degree, not like Tina and the main character are friends. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they're like more than colleagues kind of thing. Um, they did respect each other a lot, and they did work really well together. Um, uh, Sung was really upset when Rook passed away. Mm -hmm. Um. He enjoys golfing, which I think. Oh, yeah, no, that was in book. I think does it? Oh, but it was like book one. It was like years ago now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, um, and he once Rook died, um, he really pushed to become a captain. Really mm. pushed for it, but not, not because he was particularly ambitious or anything, but he because he was scared. He didn't want to be in a position of. Like Wayhaven's quiet. Like mm. this, like doesn't happen. This yeah. kind of thing, you know. So he wanted to get the captain 
so as he could be behind the desk. Yeah, so he as he could. Ah. He's not behind the desk, but he's just kind of away, and he doesn't. Yeah. He's not in the sort of like front lines. Yeah, of which it so much. I mean, it's not front lines in Wayhaven, is it? You know, but like, <laughs> not really. Although, I mean, we've had two books now, and yeah, there's some stuff got I mean, down. <laughs> I mean, even even with Rook, it wasn't. Wait, is that spoiler? Oh, I said now. I mean, it was it was a supernatural thing. Mm. His death was a supernatural I mean, thing. Spoiler. Probably... Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I mean, we all kind of... Yeah, I mean, we were all guessed. there, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so... Mm. So, yeah, so that's some facts. Oh, and a nice spoiler there. And a nice spoiler. For anyone who hadn't already guessed it. <laughs> um, so, next one. Anonymous has asked, um, vampires come from the echo world or are they turned? Where do other supernatural races come from and can they turn someone into their own kind? Um, uh, all supernaturals came from the echo world originally mm -hmm. there, there was there were no supernaturals in in our world yeah um and then the portals happened as the sort of like the barriers between worlds started to degrade mm -hmm. um over time and that's when supernaturals started to come, to come into our world but um and then so there's two type two types of super ter supernatural there are natural supernaturals mm -hmm. Which natural are ones supernatural, natural, <laughs> natural supernaturals, yeah. They're the ones that come from the echo world. Mm -hmm. Or if you get like two supernaturals um have a baby, yeah. Then that would be a natural supernatural. Mm -hmm. And then you get the human born supernaturals, who are ones who have been turned mm -hmm. by yeah. and about ninety nine percent of supernaturals can turn humans into into a into yeah. a supernatural form. Um I think there's only a couple that can and one of those is in book three, one of the mm -hmm. ones that can. Yeah. But um but yeah, I really wanted in Wayhaven the opportunity for humans to become yeah. whatever, you know. I, I know there's I know it's more complicated with things like Fae and things like that that don't turn humans in the way that vampires yeah. do and things like, or werewolves where it's like a bite or a thing yeah, like this a physical thing that happens. Yeah. To, yeah. But I still wanted that ability for humans for that connection yeah. between humans and supernaturals to be there in their genetics. Yeah. Know, it can happen, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, there you go. Very cool. Liking it. Loving all the kind of, like, backstory Lore to stuff, the yeah. world. Um, There's a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, Anonymous has asked, do you have specific moments for each love interest to say I love you to the detective? Also, I think it's great how much each romance is so different from one another and I can't wait for the next part of the demo to come out. You and me both. <laughs> um, I do have very specific moments. I have, like, like these are the moments that I've had in my head for, like, years. <laughs> years, <laughs> years. Yeah, and I cannot wait to get them <laughs> down. But each love interest has um, a set of different moments when it can happen, mm. depending on the way you're progressing your romance mm -hmm. so how the main character is reacting i could like in real life you know you yes. would say you would say these things at different times depending on how things were going yes. not necessarily with felix farah who is just so open and it's just like i'm in love i'm gonna say it right now <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the things that we love about yeah them. i mean that's, that's what i like so much about them is, is that um but yeah i do have very very specific moments mm -hmm. that these these moments could happen depending on um, and I'm so excited to write them. Like I've been working on in my imagination for so many years now, and I'm like, ah, oh, come <laughs> on, it's good to know. <laughs> it is really lovely how, like they said, like each romance is very different. Yeah, like, I, and it's it's nice that they don't all. I mean, they obviously follow the, the line of the story, but it's like it is completely their own. Well, thing, yeah, isn't I mean, it? The like thing is, you could have like someone say "I love you" in book two, yeah, and then. Obviously, I'm talking about Adam Ava here. You might not get it until <laughs> seven. Let's hope we get it before then. Um, <laughs> yeah. But and you'd have to keep playing it, like and yeah, just all the variation well, also, and everything. Is I'm amazing. hoping that you could go back and play the same romance, but play it differently. Yeah. And again, it would turn up at a different point. Point. Yeah. Like, you know, you're bold or you're shy or you're always sarcastic or you're always friendly. Like particularly with Mason Morgan, if you play yeah. like a really friendly, genuine character, it's such a different feel to the romance than playing like a very bold yeah. um, character and things like this. And I, I wanted that feel. The thing is, I love romance in books. Yeah. I love them, and I wanted it to be. A romance story. Yeah. But I still wanted those other story arcs to be there. Yeah. But the romance to be really heavily Number involved. One. Yeah. Yeah. So 
of course, I didn't think about it really, but of course I have these story arcs for the book but because the romances are so set into the game, <laughs> I have to kind of change the way these happen. So you're like you're playing practically sort of like five different books sometimes. <laughs> You have brought it up on yourself. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I love that's it. That's what you everybody know? loves so much. Yeah, about it, I think isn't it? it's hard work, and I'm not gonna lie, it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of variation to do these things. But then I play it, and I get responses from people saying how much they love it, and I'm like, oh, it's so worth this is it, why you know? We're doing it. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and as I'm writing it, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to get to like to like somebody else's scene when they have a completely different way of yeah. viewing this, and their romance is so different that this whole scene for this story is going to be so much different, you know? And it's, oh, I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so um, again, Anonymous has asked, um, I remember you saying that F would accept a proposal from the main character at this point in the story, and I'm super curious, what would the rest of Unit Bravo's reaction be to that? Oh, that's a good question. Um... So I think Adam Ava would be like, do you, you know in Frozen when Elsa's like, you can't marry someone you just met? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It very much, even though Adam Ava is very much like, they, they know the main character by mm -hmm. now and things like this, and, and they get where the relationship's going. The thing is, Adam Ava's been alive for so long that this is so short for them. <laughs> like even short if time it, frame. Yeah, even if it had been like, you know, whirlwind romance, which it is, you know, and things like that, especially for Felix Farah. But they're, you know, they'd be very much like... A whirlwind for them is maybe 300 years. Yeah, yeah, that's like, you know. <laughs> now we can start dating. <laughs> I love how um, you mentioned that Frozen bit, but I love how, like, when we were younger, I was watching, like, The Little Mermaid and stuff, and we were like, oh my God, why can't they just get married yeah. and be happy ever after? And now as we're, like, 30-odd, yeah. like, we're just like, yes, no, you can't. Yes. You're 16. You're 16. <laughs> totally on Triton's side now. Yeah, uh, happy dreams. <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, Adam Eva would be happy for them. Um, they could see how happy they are. Yeah, you know, and like it's their life. You yeah. know, if they want to do that, then that's up yeah. to them. But it still would be gives them a palpitation. Yeah, sort of because they just want to make sure that they are happy and protect yeah. them and things like this. You know, they not totally up for it. <laughs> Amazing. Our wedding, yeah, wedding to plan. Yeah, wedding to plan. Like, oh, there's love in the air. They're so happy. They would yeah. be so happy that they want to express their love in this way, you know? And so, yeah, totally, totally. Mason Morgan, eh, like, <laughs> happy for them. And it's sort of like, you go do that over there. Oh and my I'll God. stay here. Yeah, like, oh, my God, am I actually going to have to be involved in this to make some kind of, like, effort? <laughs> and they're very happy for them and things like this. But, like, oh, my God, I'm going to have to dress up and, you know, and be like, <laughs> with lots of people. Yeah. And, and, and they'll do it. Because they yeah. love their family and, you know, yeah. as much as they, they gripe and moan and groan, they, they love them and they want to make them happy, yeah. but they'll do it begrudgingly and with a lot of groaning. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, um, so Anonymous um, has asked, can I ask what you mean by deep romance? Are the romances divided into stages or development? Um, I'm so curious and trying to understand the differences. That's a really good question because we... You say like we say that an awful lot, yeah, um, and we assume people know what they, we mean. Yeah, like this is something that had developed as I was de as I was writing Wayhaven and book one came out, and um, I was answering asks on Tumblr and sort of like me and the the community like way back then, people mm -hmm. who have come up with me from like the very early <laughs> stages of book one, we just kind of developed this language with each other yeah. so like deep romance became and i forget that obviously new people are joining the community all the time and things like this so i'm, I'm sorry about that i should explain more more often but deep romance is the, the stage of the romance that's um when you're really like you're past the honeymoon phase and you're just really into that relationship yeah. or romance yeah. you know at this point you really know each other yeah you've been in a relationship or you've been in that sort of like flirtation mode mm. for a while and you're really settled you're really comfy with each other even yeah. if you're not in a relationship if you haven't decided to get into a relationship with them yeah. or like you haven't yet because they eat them adam eva kind of thing you know <laughs> um so it they are kind of they're not divided into stages but it is a development process yeah so at the, that the beginning was like the crush stage yeah and that was like book one mm -hmm. some of book two kind of thing yeah um again it depends on the love interest yeah because i really want them to be unique so they all have the different yeah. development yeah. throughout um, so yeah, the crust stage, crust stages are like crust again. Honestly, I'm oh. just obsessed with bread at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> if you couldn't tell, we're both on you know 
diet yeah of the new year and stuff and all we want is to the stodge yeah oh bro right anyway crush stage book four book two and then you're in like for the people you get into a relationship with um things like this and like nate nat felix mm. farah you're kind of in like the honeymoony phase after the relationship yeah. bit or the the proper flirtation stage yeah you know and then and then you've got the next bit, which I haven't really got a name for, you know, <laughs> after the honeymoon phase, but before the deep romance phase. Yeah. You know, when you're past the honeymoon phase, you're not quite that level of, yeah. like, intimate with each other yet. Like, you're still, like, getting up to sort yourself out in the bathroom before they wake up in the morning. Yeah. Stage, you know? <laughs> uh, we've all done it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sort of like if your hair brush and sort of like, you know. <laughs> you know that scene in the proposal? Yes. Where she's, she's like, like, yeah, she's yeah. like, are you wearing makeup? Are you wearing makeup? No. no. <laughs> like, you know, that bit. <laughs> and that's the bit before the deep romance yeah. bit. So, yeah, the deep romance is going to be sort of like book five, possibly book four for some mm. of them. Um, especially, like, Felix Farr, who's very much, like, open and accepting. Yeah. And, like, they're there. You know, they're in this, <laughs> you know? Like, um, so, yeah, that that's what that is. Cool. Um, okay, so the next one is um, Anonymous has asked, is there sentimental value behind M's rings or is it purely just a fashion statement for them? Uh, it's a bit of both. Um, one is definitely sentimental mm-hmm. and relates to their family and their backstory and things like that. I don't actually know if it'll come up. More. Yeah, I don't know if, I don't know if it's going to come up. And the other ring, again, I don't know if it's actually going to come up the story behind it, but it is fashion um, because... I like to think, again, I'm not 100% sure if this is actually going to be canon or not yet. I haven't mm-hmm. decided. But um, it you realise once it comes out of your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, was given, it was given to them by somebody in the agency. Mm-hmm. And there is, there is a story behind it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if I'm going to put that in yet. That will develop more as I come to write things later on in the series oh yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> right okay but it is, it is fashion they do like the way it looks mm. as well so i'm gonna have to do lots more playthroughs because i was very good and i didn't snoop oh what's my on the back well yeah. well yeah i, really I find it I, I feel like lots of people are very good at playing uh main characters that are characters yeah not like the yeah, role play other but people. i find it very i have to play as me i'm not very good at separating it yeah um and I no, I, yeah. I wouldn't I don't when know. I, but when I'm gonna have to I need I need some <laughs> info. When I do the the um playtesting characters and I do ones very different from me and I'm just sat there like, This is so weird, this is so weird <laughs> <laughs> Um Okay, so the next one. Um Anonymous has asked, How many new characters do you think there are going to be in book three? And any certain ones you think will love or hate right away? Oh, good question. Uh I th- there, I think, I think there's three, I think, I think there's three, Uh, but two of them are introduced just kind of for book three, Yeah, and one of them is going to be introduced as a long, long standing, yeah, like a recurring character throughout okay. the series, but that only happens in one branch, oh. this other character, yeah, um, and I hope people like them, but it depends because their introduction is very much based on another character that I know oh. that quite a few people like. So it depend on how they, how people see them getting along and things oh. like this. And also your main character will be able to respond yes. that way as well, depending on how you mm-hmm. view them and things like this. But I hope people will like them. And then obviously we've kind of met the other two. Yes. Like the episode. guy that the community has lovingly dubbed Birdman. <laughs> so we've, we've met Birdman. <laughs> Birdman. <laughs> Who I hope people do love him. I get, he's complicated. Mm. Um, you do like to write complicated characters. Well, I do like to try. It, it makes them very real. Yeah, well, I hope so. The thing is, I don't want to make them too real because they're fictional characters, and I'm very much of the essence of this is a fictional world, this is a fictional character. They're only what? <laughs> you know, they're not real. <laughs> yeah, they're, you know, they're supposed to be fictional. You yeah. know, I want to make them complicated because that makes them interested. But I'm not trying to be able to say I could take this person out of this book and put them in the real world. Yeah, I don't want that. I'm using fiction as an escape. I want them to be. In melodramatic and yeah. OTT and you know more than just what normal people would be you know I want them to be you know but the other character not so complicated just a good old villain you know bad guy yeah. you just sometimes you really just want a <laughs> straight and narrow that's probably the wrong thing to say for them but you know 
<laughs> bad guy. Just, yeah. A genuine bad guy. Yeah. Though not necessarily bad guy guy. Gender voice. That's well, uh, but, but yeah. Yeah, I, I sometimes I just really like a good, you know, <laughs> throw a cape over your face, give a cackle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, so Anonymous has asked, is Ava pronounced Ava or Ava? Just realised I maybe may have been reading it wrong. Um, it, it's Ava. Mm-hmm. Um, is it? Yeah, yeah. Ava. Yeah. Um, so it, it's Ava Dumortan. Mm-hmm. And then Adam do more time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nathaniel Sewell, mm-hmm. Natalie Sewell, mm-hmm. and obviously Nate and that. Yeah. Uh, Fora Hoville, mm-hmm. Fida Coville, Mason, no uh, surname, Morgan, <laughs> no surname, um, Tina Poname, mm-hmm. Verda Solomon. Solomon Verda. I know, but I always call him Verda, so. I know. I think, it's like yeah. Verda, comma. Solomon, <laughs> like being called Solomon. Um, uh, who else have we got? We've got uh, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby Marks, Bobby yeah. Marks, or Robert um, Marks, or Roberta oh. Marks. Mm. Full names. Uh, 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 what about Unit Alpha? Uh, uh, Maka Scott, Tame Scott, Tamika, uh, Tamika Dioli, and then the Sedi Coella. I'm not entirely sure about the surname mm. if I'm saying that right. Uh, uh, Elador, Elador, Cobor, which wasn't supposed to rhyme when I wrote down the paper, but did when I said it out loud. Uh, Tapisa, Vieno. I think that's it, isn't it? Falk, Falk and Murphy. Murphy. Murphy is Murphy. Murphy is Murphy. Oh, oh I forget a little bit about Murphy. Yeah, but... he's there in the background, yeah. just like bubbling there. No, 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 no. Um, my name is pronounced Mishka because I get quite a lot of asked about that. Mm. And then May is May. Yeah. It's Naomi. It's Naomi, yeah. We generally just call me Naomi. Yeah. And then Spunky Cat Ninja. Mm-hmm. I call her Spunky Cat because I don't know if she wants me to use her real name, so Spunky Cat. Fair enough. So there you go. So there you have I it. I don't think we've missed anybody. Um, oh, Douglas. Oh, Douglas oh poor Douglas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Douglas Friedman. Yeah. Yeah. Poor Doug. Um, okay, so um, Zizzlequam. Um, oh, asked... yeah, I recognise that one. Hello. Uh, <laughs> Who is most protective in general? Uh, not necessarily over a romantic partner, but just over people they care about or even just a random kid in trouble. Ooh. Uh, I think... Uh, um, I think that's possibly a situational thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's sort of like, you know... Um, over, over their team. Yeah. Like team members and people within the agency mm-hmm. and things like that. Um, definitely... Like Adam Ava or Mason Morgan. Mason Morgan less over like the rest of the agency, but definitely, definitely over their own team. Yeah. yeah. And then over people in general, like random kids in trouble or or people who they're trying to protect on missions and mm-hmm. things like that. Nate and that, definitely. Yeah. Um, but for like protecting the happiness of their family and like the what their way of life yeah. and their freedoms and things like that is definitely Felix Farah. Yeah. Um so yeah, I think I think it's, like, it's um, like how they got it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's situational. Well, it's things like Felix Far, like the love triangle, particularly. Mm. Uh, Felix Far is very less, um, like sarcastic, fun comments about the love yeah. triangle, and much more like snipey yeah. barbs about the love triangle because it's they're very worried. The boat. <laughs> yeah, they're very worried about the fallout of what yeah. you know and things like that. Mason Morgan, a little bit oblivious at the moment, like what well, like, you know, <laughs> but um. That will change, obviously, mm. and, and they'll start to see how things are yeah. getting a bit antsy and things like that as well. Mm. Especially if you're on their like best friend route and things like this. Oh, there's this particular scene for Mason Morgan's best friend route with the love triangle when this thing happens. <laughs> and it's, oh, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, I can't wait. <laughs> Goodness, lots of good things to come. Um, so, um, Certain Man Student Mug um, has asked, are all units in the organisation the same species or not? And if they are, why? Uh, no, they're not. Uh, most are because it makes it easier to send out on particular jobs. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, Unit Bravo are all vampires. Yeah. So, in general, vampires are, you know, they have good strength and agility. Yeah. Um, and they have their hypersenses yes. and they also have their pheromones. Yeah. This makes them great for needing to get in places where they may need to 
infiltrate somewhere yeah. quietly or yes. they may need to get past people mm-hmm. or they need to do you know um but within that they all each vampire obviously has their own particular skill set that they do and then unit alpha um werewolves are strong and powerful mm. but they don't tend to be subtle yeah. <laughs> so yeah they're more like um like shock shock troopers mm-hmm. is that is that what they're called i think that, mm, that's possibly. right where they where they go in I, I mean, I don't really know if that's the right term for them. I don't know what shock troopers really are, but it sounds about right. When they go in, they blast through, and then everyone's left going, wait, what just happened? And they've already finished the mission before anybody really knows what's gone on, you know? <laughs> um, whereas, so it, it's useful to have the same species yeah. because then, whereas mixed ones, they're sent in for more jobs that are a bit more complicated. Yeah. But they also do tend to be lower down on the field unit ranking. Mm-hmm. Um, generally, the thing is, the field ranking unit, the way it's done, is the more jobs you successfully complete, the higher yeah. up the rank you go. Okay. But of course, it's a bit unfair because ones that are lower are mixed, they tend to get sent out on less jobs. So they yeah. may do less successful yeah. jobs because they, they don't have any. Yeah, they don't have as many. Um, but they're sent out on ones where you might need like someone to infiltrate and someone to be a shock trooper and yeah. someone to be that, you know? And the, that's when a mixed group hmm. is sort of sent in together. Or sometimes you'll have um, they'll get in a team of tactical agents, and tactical agents are like solo agents, ones that work yeah. alone. And they're, uh, on the rare occasion, they'll bring in tactical agents to work together um, to form, yeah. if they need a specific job then. Oh, well, there you go. Mm-hmm. Um, so the next one is um, from Anonymous, um, and they have asked, um, I know that Adam tends to ignore the attraction signs that other people have on him. Uh, but I also know that he's already used this artifice in certain missions. Can you tell us more about that? I was curious. Um, my detective in particular is jealous despite not know- showing much. Um, I'm laughing imagining someone telling the story of the mission and she with her eyes closed and arms crossed waiting for an explanation from Adam, even though they were never together. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, again, this relates to the other one where you send them in. Normally, they go on missions where they need to infiltrate stuff. Yeah. So they need to get past humans and things like this. And a good way of doing that, especially for the vampire scene, as they are so attractive, is to charm their way in. Yeah. Now, Nate, Nat, or Felix or Farah are usually sent in to do this. Yeah. They're both incredibly charming. They know what they're doing. Yeah. They're, like, they both are happy to know that they're attractive <laughs> and to use that to their advantage. Yeah, advantage. Um, but I mean, there are there are times when Nate, Nat, and Felix Farah need to go and do their own thing. Like yeah. Felix Farah is incredible at infiltrating places without anybody knowing. Yeah. So like they'll go around the back and get into the building and yeah. scope out the area, which means they can't be at the front. So yeah. normally Nate or Nat would be sent in to yes. do that. Um, but Nate, Nat sometimes is called away if they need to do more research on an yeah. area or something like that. And there there is a couple of times they've done that. At one particular time. There was when they needed to do this, and Nate, Nat, and Felix Farah weren't there, and it was just Mason Morgan and Adam Ava. <laughs> and they, there was a human at the front that they didn't want to harm. Yes. So, um, Mason Morgan was like, "We're gonna have to charm them. That's the easiest way to do yeah. it. Like, this is what they do. This is we're gonna have, we're to, do gonna have to do it." And Mason Morgan is pretty good at seducing people, not yeah. great at charming people. No. It's not their, you know, um. So they flipped a coin for it. They flipped a coin for it. How's it for doing it? And Adam Eva lost. Oh. So they had to go and charm this person. And it was as awkward as you I were imagining it was. I'm already imagining it <laughs> yeah. in my head and cringing. It's like that. Hey, how are, how are you doing? <laughs> are you here often? And they're like, it's my job. I need to sit at this desk and I'm the receptionist. <laughs> like, and they're like, sure. Must be a nice job <laughs> it, it was as awkward as oh, it sounded but it was enough of a distraction for Mason Morgan to slip in and then you know and then it was the whole do you dare tell Felix Farrell what we done here <laughs> and Mason Morgan it, oh no all fairness didn't say anything because otherwise Adam Ava would never have lived that down <laughs> <laughs> amazing loving it so they, they they do know they are aware yeah of what their looks and mm-hmm. things can do whether that's being very intimidating yeah or whether that's trying to make people swoon but not doing the best job but say from their mouth kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's so> cool. <laughs> um cool so i think i think that's it for 
the February. February. Thank you very much uh, for sending all of the apps. Yeah, they were good fun, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. keep them coming. It's all good. Um, send them through to Mishka's Tumblr yeah. is the best way to send them in. Um, and yes, so um, we ha now are on iTunes, Woo! which is amazing. We're trying to get um, we're trying to get um, the podcast version up on uh, Spotify and other places as well. But iTunes just came on first so go and check it out there. there so yes episode one is on there which was january's so yes um we'll hopefully we'll get this one up, well, yeah. up as quick as we can but yes so that's very exciting yeah um but yeah so until then um yeah, talk to you soon talk to you soon Bye bye bye